world. The miracle man, Daniel Jacobs, has made history. I want to fight Peter Quillen in Brooklyn, New York, here at the Barclays Center. Danny Jacobs has the belt, and he's still calling me out. What did I tell you about me? You know what I'm saying? I got something that these guys want. Kid Chocolate Quillen! It's about my name. It's about what I already accomplished. How many of y'all came to see me? I can be the one that he fights in, creates the name he's looking for. Danny Jacobs and Peter Quillen, each with something the other wants. One with a belt. I can't afford to lose this fight. My dreams of being a superstar will all be over. The other with a reputation. He's got something to prove. I don't have anything to prove, you know what I'm saying? This is a life-defining, career-defining win for me. And if I can get it, my whole everything will change. Two men linked to a time, a place, and a borough. You know how I fight for the people in Brooklyn, right? One man's future will come at the other's expense. Can you do the cow? Mm. Well, what about the tiger? Wow. Wow, OK. What about the snake? What about the horse? Me. Me. The life Peter Quillen made for himself in Brooklyn, with his wife Allison and their 14-month-old son Joaquin, couldn't be more different than the one he left behind in Michigan 14 years ago. Growing up in Grand Rapids, it was very, very, very tough, you know, struggling and fighting on the street. It went from me, like, being picked on to me being a real bad guy, like, being like, don't mess with him. Wow, wow. I was in and out of the streets. I was, like, you know, ravaged. I went in that boxing gym, and I started to dedicate my life around there, even through trying to juggle that in the streets. And I ever told myself, like, if I had the opportunity to get out of Michigan, I would. You know, I find, like, people where I'm from, they recycle their kids through the struggles that they grow through, you know what I mean? Like, I waited a long time to have a kid, you know what I'm saying, because I wanted to make sure I can financially, you know, support them. In 2012, 11 years after arriving in New York, he finally got what he'd been working for, a shot at the title. It was the first card at the new Barclays Center in Brooklyn. His opponent, Hassan and Dom. Both men were a perfect 27 and 0. So the crowd all jacked up for their own Peter Quillen. Quillen is the guy who gives all credit to boxing for getting him off the streets. Nice counter left hand. And a good left hand drops in time. Crowd here at the Barclays Center on its feet as Quillen has changed this fight completely. From any left hand, down goes and down again. Huge round for Peter Quillen here. Decided once and for all. I think boxing is the only sport that really defines life. You know, life is about fighting through a struggle, overcoming the struggle. And that's what a champion is definitely is. He, he get in there and he overcome when people say he can't be a champion. He becomes a champion for himself. And the new WBO middleweight champion of the world, Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen. Peter Quillen is a winner. And Breaks down, very emotional right now. I want to thank Grand Rapids, Michigan for making me a fighter and New York City making me a man. It's a long road Quillen has traveled, but every so often he circles back to move forward. At 18, he arrived from Grand Rapids, a teenager with only a dream. No money, no place to live. He even spent time in a homeless shelter his first break, a job in the Bronx. We had a new waiter, his name was Ray. Ray was a waiter at IOP. He got me a position there. Me getting in that job, I felt a little bit more secure that I had some money coming in. This guy right here, 
Let me tell you something. So O was, you know, training with my trainer is originally what we started in this little pile of boxers. O started during that time and, you know, he's still competing and everything. Amazing guy, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. I'll never forget, uh, starting off, come from New York. Very, very humble back then and he's still just as humble now. Oh, man, thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Yes, I get really emotional when I come back here because th this job helped me out so much that he was like living broke. And it's like, it's the craziest thing that ever happened to me, man, in my whole life, you know what I mean? God bless you too, man. I'm gonna call them and I'm gonna put a tickets together. Whoever don't work that night, they could come to the fight and everything. I put a number together and everything. So make sure y'all get the comment and everything. All these things that happened from me being homeless to those type of things happening in my life, those all happened for a reason. You're bossy, right? Yeah, I'm the big man now. Yeah. That's all I have. Yeah. See, see? One of my jimbe. It's my time now. All right, Papa. That's why I always say, Paso bueno tema, no tra mucho. All right. Yeah, yeah. Ten seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I'm so sorry. How are you? That's right, guys. There is a lot of stake here. It's a belt and also Brooklyn bragging rights. You treat this as kind of a battle for Brooklyn supremacy? <laughs> <laughs> the Fight Cup coming in December in Brooklyn against another guy from Brooklyn. Brooklyn on Brooklyn crime. Well, he can't go completely Brooklyn because he wasn't born in Brooklyn. So if anybody was to go full-fledged Brooklyn, it would be me. All right. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I have been the Brooklyn guy, and I have been the New York guy since the amateurs. I mean, I won four different Golden Gloves. <laughs> I made a name for myself. What's going on, brother? You're going to be pretty cool, right? We're doing it, yeah. The tickets went on sale today. Coming from Brownsville, all I had was boxing at one point. Get a second. Can you come out of fire? Sure, absolutely, man. Yeah. I set out a goal from That's being a teenage right. kid, and <laughs> I accomplished it by any means. All right, boys. I'll let you get back. Thank you, guys. But I knew that. If I harvested it and took it and lived it and made it my life, that it can change everything. No matter where his career has taken him, Danny Jacobs remains close to home, making his camp in a basement in bed -Stuy, not far from where he grew up. Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen gets set to make the second defense of the title. He won in October of 2012 in his new hometown of Brooklyn, New York. Danny Jacobs, a fellow New Yorker. Yeah, yeah there's talk that he may, uh, in fact, get a shot. This is about two years ago. I've been telling you, it's been brewing for a while. <laughs> I've been wanting it for a long time, man. It's finally here. Peter Quillen, he might not be the champion now, but he has that title of Brooklyn. He has that. But now it's my time, and I'm coming to take that crown. Get that chocolate out of the <laughs> You know, I go, show me how I'm going to do it. Yes. Yes. Among the benefits of training at home is Jacob's six-year-old son, Nathaniel, a frequent visitor at camp. My son is one of the biggest boxing fans you'll ever see. You sound like daddy. You know, as a father, to have your son admire what you do, it's like the greatest thing in the world. Daddy? Yes, why do you make that noise like, uh, uh, uh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Why I make that noise? Yes. It's a sexy. Yo! Uh, you funny. <laughs> Classic crazy. Me growing up, I didn't really have too many great examples as a kid. And I mean, I love my father to death. I love my father with all my heart, but I didn't really have the best relationship with my dad. I know my parents didn't have it all to give to me. And I vowed that if I ever had a child, that I would give him my all and everything that I've always wanted from my father. To know that he understands that and he gets it and he appreciates his father, man, it's just heartwarming, you know? It's, I couldn't ask for anything better. Long jab, get it out there. For much of Jacob's early years, Andre Rogier served as both trainer and role model. Ah, uh, there you go, there you go. They've been working together since 2002, going all the way back to Danny's storied amateur career. Danny cannot afford to lose his fight. That's why Danny won't lose his fight. That's better, that's better, that's what I'm talking about. Time. The winner of this fight will be on another level. 
Good, good work, good work. He probably going to want for a rematch, but don't give it to him. <laughs> While one fighter prefers the comforts of home, his opponent moves his camp 1,200 miles due south. Peter Quillen feels at ease in Miami, his base of operations, until he heads back home for December 5th. Everything is accessible to me. You know, I live around the corner, I can walk to the gym, I can walk to the beach, the track is right there, I got a swimming pool in my same facility. Everything is right here near us. New York. Apartments here, there, this, everybody's everywhere. And then, oh, he's late, the train gonna be not there, the cab, what about this, we gotta go here. It's taking all day to get here. What happened to Richie, oh man, we don't know. New York life. But now we down here, we just like, looking like we from Miami, look at me. You know what I mean? ¿Qué right. parte de Cuba? Gracias. Mira, no trae mucho para su buen tiempo. Ya, ya, todo yeah. tranquilo. ¿Cuál es Me, tu peso? Um, 160 middleweight. No, Me, no, 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 no. En la, en la, en la primera. Okay. I'm more well known and spotted out by Cubans here than I ever in my career. Yeah. We are proud of you. Gracias. Damn. That means a lot right there. My father left Cuba to make opportunity, and now I'm living testament to that. I got a Cuban flag here, and my blood is Cuban. Yo soy un guajiro con tumbao. Yo no aprende mucho español, pero yo sabes es muy importante para mi cultura, porque mi padre, you know, es de todo lo cubano, por la Santiago de Cuba. The Fifth Street Gym in Miami Beach, made famous by Muhammad Ali and his trainer, Angelo Dundee. But half a century later, Quillen and his trainer, Eric Brown, are looking to create their own history here. We make sure that we keep doing like we was doing yesterday. We can only get better on it. That's gonna be the key yeah. to helping us win this next fight. Ready, baby? Let's go to work. He's always had great punching power. He's become a much better boxer and better defensively. He knows how to fight. Good shot. Good shot. That's what I like right there. I don't know nothing about my power. I've never been hit by me. My logic to everything is like, it's not really the power. It's really what's inside of me deep down. And that's what's pulling out of me. And that's what gives me the power that I need to win fights. With 34 knockdowns in just 33 fights, Quillen has ample power. But as the caliber of his opponents increased, Critics have wondered if his boxing ability has kept pace. Every fighter is different, so let them have their opinions about me and their views. Everybody's entitled to that. What all changes is when we get in the ring and we get with a good punch, and his plan A doesn't work, and he got to go to plan B. All those plans go out the window, you know what I mean? The fight is over. <laughs> Though his wife and son remain in Brooklyn, Quillen's father, Pedro, has become a fixture in camp. It wasn't always this way, as his father was absent for much of Peter's childhood. Now, they're doing their best to make up for lost time. When I re got reacquainted with my pops, I just, you know, I felt a little bit more fulfilled as opposed to, you know, growing up without him. 15, come on, 15. Hey, you're really 15. You know, the that we do with each other is like, you know, it's always gonna be special to me, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I lost a lot of time with my dad. It's special to have a relationship with your pops like that, you know what I'm saying? Same 15. Same 15, put my 15 down to her. Joaquincito. Yay! Yeah, big boy. Among the lessons Quillen has learned is to always be available for his own son. Say, Papa. 
little sports massage. You like those? You like the massage? Watch what happens. Watch, ready. Ready? You ready for your sports massage? Yeah. <laughs> bye, say bye bye. 15. No. Say bye bye. Okay. I love you. See the baby looking at you. Love you. Ten, baby. Same ten, baby. Same ten. Most fighters are familiar with the pre-fight medical exam. It's part of the ritual. But this is something different. So I'm finally not nervous anymore about coming back here. Right? <laughs> no, you were not last time. Well, last Today, time Danny Jacobs finds himself at New York Presbyterian Hospital, as he does every six months. <laughs> but there's nothing routine about it. The middleweight champ is a cancer survivor. May 2011 is when my life got shaken up. Just come over here. I was diagnosed with bone cancer. Just turn around here. Okay. The cancer paralyzed me. You tell me if there's any pain, any discomfort. You know, I remember when you used to scrape yeah. the bottom of my feet, and yeah. I couldn't you feel couldn't it. Couldn't feel that, right? I remember that. I know. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, I know. On your back. Okay. My career, my life, everything was in jeopardy. Doctors removed a handball-sized tumor. It was wrapped around Jacob's spine. But that was just the start of a grueling rehabilitation. I remember getting 25 counts of radiation, and every time it would shift my attitude, it would make me nauseous, and feeling just drained, drained of life. Doctor said you might not be able to walk 100% again, and they definitely said you wouldn't be able to box again. As a fighter, that just flipped my whole world upside down. I remember that determination that I had to, to get back, to prove the doctors wrong, to accomplish my dreams and my goals. 15 months after his diagnosis, he returned to the ring. The first televised fight at the Barclays Center. The same night, Quillen won his title. What a story, this young man. He's already won the biggest battle of his life. And that hurt him, and the left hand dropped him. And it's over just like that. A triumphant return for Danny Jacobs. All I could remember was just running to the ropes and jumping on it, raising my head and saying, I'm back. I'm back. Jacobs didn't merely survive. He fought his way back into contention. And this fight has been stopped. A little more than three years after his diagnosis, in August 2014, he returned to the Barclays Center with a chance to win the vacant WBA title. The Brooklyn native teeing off on Fletcher. Down goes Fletcher. And Daniel Jacobs has made history. They told me I could never box. They told me I wouldn't walk proper, but guess what I did? I proved everyone wrong, so Brooklyn is in effect tonight. They're going to be doing the breast cancer walk today at, at, at Prospect Park, and there's going to be thousands of people there, you know, supporting and honoring, you know, friends and loved ones. You know, I'm going there to do my part and spread some of the love and uh, represent. I was actually at the fight when you won the title. There we go. Barclay Center. Here we go. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I remember once looking at cancer as I didn't do anything to deserve this. That's it. It's a beautiful tree, baby. But, you know, as I got older and as I got wiser, I realized that this was the biggest blessing that I can possibly have. And became the first cancer survivor to be a world champion. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. People can say, you know what, if he can do it, I can do it too. Oh, finish line, finish line. We did it, baby. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> so much weight. WBA middleweight champion. And a four-year cancer survivor. Yes, Let's right. give it up, folks. 
When you train in Miami, the beach is your gym. Today, Quillen works with his strength and conditioning coach. And joining in is longtime friend and camp manager, Johnny Burris. Get ready? Come on, come on. I met Peter, seventh grade, middle school. On, Actually, on, the first time I ever met him, he just knocked somebody out. Quick, 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 quick. I was like, I don't know if I want to go to this school if they're going to be doing this every day. Use your legs, pop. Use your legs, come on. There you go. He's like ready to go right now. And it's a lot of people that, that's gunning for him. It's a lot of people that's going to be, you know, they're going to be sad once they get in the ring and get hit by a bull. I want you to work on technique, but the timing has to be perfect. That means you throw two punches. I want those punches to be quick. I don't want them to be slow. Two punches, pop up. Let's go, we're done. Nice stuff. Good. Preparing for battle is usually a grueling and solitary affair. But with the fight just weeks away, Quillen's family and friends gather to break the monotony and throw a surprise party in his honor. We spent a couple weeks planning together. We've flown in secretly. Everything was booked behind his back. I wasn't even expecting this, you know what I'm You wasn't? You had no... You gotta do stuff without you knowing oh, everything. I'm, thank you for everything. This is like, this, this means a lot. I don't get a lot of surprises like this, you know what I'm saying? The other surprise we did for him was we had everyone record a greeting on their phone and send it to us. We put together a montage of well wishes. People really special to him. People have known him for years. I know he's going to be really touched. You inspire me to make more sacrifices, man. Good luck on the fight, man. Go get him, champ. You've taught me a lot about what it means to be a good person. You're my champion inside the ring, and more importantly, you're my champion outside the ring. Knock him dead, Tiger. Thank you. I wanted to wish you all the best on your upcoming fight. We're all proud of you. We're all be rooting for you. I'm so very fortunate for your friendship and couldn't be more proud of the man you've become. You make it happen. Now go get that belt. <laughs> yeah, <it's dropping. laughs> that means a lot to me. Oh, Y'all just caught a real moment, man. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Each fighter looks to his past for inspiration. So as December 5th draws near, Jacobs returns to his roots. He frequented the Brownsville Rec Center as a kid, but now, as a reigning middleweight champ, he's come to see the marching band. They call themselves the approaching storm, but like Jacobs himself, they're from the neighborhood, and they'll herald his entrance on fight night. Good job, you guys. Nice to meet all you guys. How you guys doing today? First of all, this was an amazing, amazing thing you guys are doing. I really appreciate you guys. I need to walk out and I need to know y'all guiding me and y'all aiding me, right, to battle. So it's like y'all aiding me and guiding me to finish the job, but when I get in there, I'm going to do my part, but I need to feel it. I need to feel the pump. I need to feel that Brooklyn. I need to feel that, that Brownsville, you know what I mean? I need to feel that Brownsville in me. So they're going to have thousands of fans inside the Barclays Center. Trust me, it's going to be big, and I'm just honored that you guys can do this for me. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Two men on the cusp of something bigger, something better. Congruent lives on a collision course. Everything's within your rhythm. No matter how many times you fall down, you get back up, you push harder. You get to that wall, you knock it down. This is why ain't nobody gonna be able to stop. There you go, don't stop! Each dedicated to his family and their future. You're coming to try to take that belt. 
We're going to kick some ass. Nice. Now, let the beatings commence. And the gateway to that future is the place of glory's past. Terrific start for Brooklyn's Daniel Jacobs. Will and pounding him now. But only for one of them. December 5th, the Barclays Center, the Battle of Brooklyn. Don't miss Danny Jacobs versus Peter Quillen, live Saturday, December 5th, only on Showtime.